Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for more it's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to the new Wavetable Oscillator in Citer Pro. Before I continue, I would like to remind viewers of this channel or of this video to subscribe as it helps growing the channel and bringing more tutorials and videos like this one. Thank you very much. Okay, so we are inside Terra Pro. What I'm going to do is going to click where it says new preset and I'm going to click on the plus sign and click on new. So we have created a new preset which sounds like this one. Right, so I'm not going to use the free oscillator mixer and filter one for the purpose of this tutorial. So I'm going to click here where it says filter one in the amp module and I'm going to select here a uh, wavetable oscillator. Now, the wavetable oscillator is uh, a great addition to Terra Pro. It allows you, as um, any wavetable technology, to add multiple waveforms up to 1024, and each uh, waveform can contain between 128 and 4096 um, sample per cycle. So, as you can see, it has uh, it is already expanded. This is uh, um, the view when it is not in the expanded, uh, uh, where the section is not expanded in terms of parameters, as you normally know using Terra Pro. So if we expand it, we have a, a number of controls here. So let's disable all of them and last, let's start from, from scratch. So first of all, when everything is disabled, you have a fixed frequency. And of course, if you enable track, it will track the keys on the keyboard to adjust the relevant frequency. Of course, if you don't want to use tracking, you can adjust the frequency here well, with the pitch dial, and you can also do some fine adjustment in sync with the fine dial. Um, here you can select the uh, wavetable. So click on it and you have this new menu where you have a number of folders and let's choose analog and let's choose the sine triangle square and so and click done. As you can see, we have now a first one selected for the sine wave. And I just and as I just mentioned, you can change the pitch and fine if you're not in truck mode. Double click to reset it to the default. And that's the adjustment in sent. Of course, you can also apply two modulations um, sources here. In this case, you have the LFO2 selected here. So let's increase the amount of modulation, which sounds like a vibrato, right? But of course, you can increase that a little bit more. Double click to reset it to the default. Now, this is where it becomes really um, fun. Here you have a dial which says table positions. You can change uh, through the different frames of the wave table. So let's try. And you, and you see that uh, in, it's difficult to move uh, properly from one to the next, okay, in terms of frame. And something that can help is this button here where it says uh, IP for interpolation, and it will it will in this case interpolate between the different uh, waveforms. At this stage, um, I might want to enable tracking on. And of course, you can apply two modulation here. Again, as sources, so let's try these ADSR. So let's be too quick. So let's click and hold on ADSR2 to open the different parameters. Let's increase the attack. And of course, we can increase the decay as well. Really nice indeed. Let's click again on the ADSR. 
Something that is also quite uh, um, interesting to notice is you have an anti-aliasing here. So let's go up of frequency. So let's see uh, if we can hear some artifacts. And you can hear as I'm uh, um, activating the anti-aliasing, you, you can hear that is moving, particularly in the high range, you have less uh, artifact. So. If I was to remove that ADSR and move the table position, you can hear very clearly now, I hope you have uh, some headphones, but you can clearly uh, here are now the differences when you apply anti-aliasing to smooth that, um, uh, that top range artifact. <laughs> Similarly, on the, uh, you can decrease the resolution as well uh, in terms uh, of uh, um, the waveform that is produced. Just uh, clicking on the quantize button. <laughs> Let's go lower on the register. You should be able to hear it, particularly at this lower range, that there is a background noise which I is introduced when I enable quantization. When I disable that, it disappears a little bit. Okay, so let's go up the uh, range again. Why not? Let's have anti-aliasing on. Now, you have a synchronization. A synchronization, in this case, to the oscillator uh, one, which means that every time that it goes through the zero signal and restarts, um, the waveform gets resynchronized. Okay, the waveform that is being played. You can hear that clearly if you go lower range. This is a hard sync. Of course, you can also have a wick sync, which means that that the form will restart when it's towards the end of playing that uh, waveform uh, cycle. So let's try. It's quite different. Okay, next you have also access to phase modulation. Indeed, this should be a P instead of a W, but it is a standard for uh, phase modulation. And here you have the amount, practically it takes the output and then um, uh, take the output and uh, add the output phase shifted to the input, of course. So let's start with that term to zero and let's enable this. <laughs> Okay, and of course you have a source of modulation here as well. And of course you can adjust uh, um, the um, frequency of the LFO, click and hold on LFO2 and then you can adjust it here. Okay, let's click again on the LFO2. Next, let's disable this um, for a moment, the phase modulation, as we are not uh, using it. And here you have an input which says oscillator number one, but of course you can uh, um, change that if you like to um, something else, which can be indeed also itself, like the weight table oscillator, but let's leave that to oscillator number one. And this is where you can do actually frequency modulation and you have just underneath you have the um, amount here which you can choose uh, FM index Okay, um, let me show you a couple of other 
waveforms which might be of uh, interest as well. So let's go to uh, up a folder. So let's go to wave table here. Let's choose vocal and table 1512. And you find that there is these uh, one to be selected, which stands, uh, which is called just wanna um, thank you, which is quite nice. So let's try it. And let's click them. Let's go lower in the register. Let's move these down, the table position. Let's add some ADSR. Really nice indeed. So as you can see, you have a lot of different options that you can use with this new weight table oscillator and indeed if you click on presets you go up a folder you find also a weight table folder with a lot of different presets which is uh, really really nice so let's try some of those <laughs> This is quite nice. This is where you can clearly see interpolation in action. So if you click on it. Set. Let's try this one. You can hear the difference here with anti on. You have that background artifact. And of course, the type of sound you can create now is phenomenal because you can add all different type of uh, other oscillator, of course, and for use different uh, synthesis techniques inside Terra Pro. And now you can really create evolving pads that changes slowly, for example, depending on, uh, for example, the type of LFO that you have in place or a DSR or, or source of modulation, you can really move from one waveform to the next. I'm going to stop here. I hope you enjoyed the short introduction and tutorial to the new wavetable oscillator inside Terra Pro. Okay, see you next time. Bye.